Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And real quick before we get started, if you haven't watched the last two videos, the one with Shane Sprengler and Jay Schreckengoss, those are two cases that are ongoing where searches are still ongoing and I know it would mean a lot to everybody involved. If you don't even want to watch them, if you want to share them, or if, especially if you live in the area, just share them around. That would be really, really great just to get the word out and to help spread their stories. And hopefully we can bring them home safe soon. So today's video, we are going to be heading to Death Valley National Park, which is in California, in North America. And it is quite a, an interesting place. Now it was originally inhabited by the Timbisha Indians and they uh, lived there for over a millennia and I, that to me is just amazing. Now they called it the Tumpiza Valley which I guess is a word for rock paint and it refers to the red okra paint that can be made from a type of clay found in the valley and apparently some families still live in the valley at a place called Furnace Creek. Now, Death Valley didn't get its English name until 1849 during the California Gold Rush, and at the time it was called Death Valley by the prospectors and others who tried to cross that particular area. During the 1850s, when gold and silver were extracted in that particular valley, now it was proclaimed a national monument in February, uh, February 11th, 1933 by President Herbert Hoover, and that whole area was placed under federal protection, but it wasn't uh, redesignated to, as Death Valley National Park until 1994, and it was also substantially expanded to include Saline and Eureka Valleys. Now, it is located in Eastern California, mostly in Northern Mojave Desert, which borders the Great Basin Desert, and in the summertime, it's literally one of the hottest places on Earth, and next to places like in the Middle East and the Sahara with temperatures getting over 120 degrees at times. Now Death Valley's Badwater Basin is literally the lowest point of elevation in North America at only 282 feet above sea level. It is roughly 84 miles east-southeast to Mount Whitney which is the highest point in the continental United States with an elevation of 14,500 feet which is, if you look at this map, it's pretty crazy how close these two, but how different in uh, terrain they are, and climate for that matter. Now, unfortunately, due to its terrain and very oppressive heat and environment, a lot of people do go in unprepared, and they really don't know what they're up against, especially if they're traveling there in the summertime. So it is important that if you are planning a trip to this park, that you, know, you read up about it, you take the proper supplies, you take plenty of water with you and depending on what time of the year you're going it's usually if it's you're in the summer the peak season of heat that is it is advised to hike or explore before the hours of 10 a.m. because the heat really does get just so oppressive temperatures can reach over 120 degrees Fahrenheit unfortunately every year people succumb to various reasons mostly heat exhaustion but just this past week a woman, a 27-year-old woman, had left the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes parking lot roughly around 11 a.m. with her aunt, and then roughly an hour and a half later, they split up. Her aunt subsequently returned to the car, and the younger woman said that she would be coming back in maybe an hour or two. Well, by 5 p.m., she hadn't returned, so her aunt contacted park rangers to report her missing, uh, they did a search into the night and the search resumed into the next morning and roughly early morning sometime between the hours of uh, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. they did find her deceased about a mile and a half north of the parking lot in the flats beyond the sand dunes. Currently park officials have not released any information about this woman but her aunt described her as a very experienced hiker now, currently, the Inyo County Coroner's Office is investigating the cause of death. However, no foul play is suspected, and it's most likely that she passed away due to heat exhaustion or of the elements. Um, this mesquite flat is near the Stovepipe Wells, and it's apparently a very well-traveled area of the park. Now, over this past over the weekend that this happened, Death Valley high temperatures were in the mid 80s, and the overnight lows were in the upper 50s. 
So it's hard to say what happened here. It's most likely she could have uh, passed away from lack of water, dehydration, or the elements. She could have had a fall. There's not much of anything here except for in the parking lot area of this Mesquite Flats. And that whole area is basically totally surrounded by mountains. So if you get lost in this area or if you're on your own, it could be big trouble. So this is definitely an area you want to research very well, hand, well beforehand. On January 30th of this year, 2020, Justin Ibershoff, 38, from Los Angeles, who is a very experienced climber and canyoneer, he fell from a cliff during a terrible rock slide while canyoneering, canyoneering in Deimos Canyon in the park. And this was just one of those tragic accidents because he was a very experienced climber and canyoneer and this just rock slide, you know, took his life. This next story is both touching and just, just so tragic. On April 4th of this year, Alexander Lofgren, who was 32 from Tucson, Arizona, he fell from a cliff in the Willow Creek area and he was with his fiance who saw this happen and she was trying to help him and became injured herself. The search that subsequently ensued for these two was a highly technical search and they were in rough conditions. but. They eventually did find this couple on the ledge five days later, and unfortunately, even though they were rescued and brought to the hospital, Alexander did eventually succumb to his injuries. Emily, his fiance, did survive the ordeal, but I just can't imagine you know, what an ordeal this was. A, seeing her fiance first get injured, then trying to help him, getting hurt herself, and then being out there for five days before being rescued. My thoughts and prayers go out to Emily for being just such a brave and strong human being and sticking there with, with her partner and I just can't imagine how hard all this has been and just wishing you all the best in the future. And then on July 28th of this year, Douglas Branham, 68, from Washington, he was out hiking by himself on the salt flats near Badwater and he passed away in 118 to 120 degree heat. Now he was found, his remains were found roughly three days later, and it was determined that he passed away from the elements or heat exhaustion. Death Valley National Park is definitely unique compared to all the other parks that we've covered on this channel or discussed, or even that are in the United States, because it has just such an oppressive environment not only the crazy temperatures, but you know the complete lack of water. It's not like in some other parks where you might have to hike for maybe you know a long stretch might be 20 or 30 miles without water. Here, you don't have water, and it's a matter of life or death. So please, anyone planning on visiting this park, please plan appropriately. Know what you need. Know the weather. Know which parts of the park are viable at the time, you know, when you're planning on going, and just be safe about it. And of course, I highly recommend taking a Garmin device and an emergency blanket, because in this case, it would be great for signaling help. Reflective would be very easy to be seen out in the desert area. Now, this next part of the park that I want to talk about is called the Go Golden Canyon Trail. It's one of the most popular areas because it's a beautiful area and it's apparently a great hike, but unfortunately it's also one of the most dangerous or it's one of the most places where people get into trouble or tend to pass away because of heat exhaustion or they wander off the trail and they can't find their way back. And in August of this year, Lawrence Stanbeck, who is 60 years old from San Francisco, he was uh, hiking this part of the trail and just collapsed from heat exhaustion, which is the most common thing to happen out in this park. Now on August 21st, Blake Chaplin, who was 52 years old, visiting the park from Leewood, Kansas, he was out on a hike up the Golden Canyon Trail, and apparently he was hiking in pretty early morning hours, but the temperatures were close to 120 degrees, and unfortunately he never came back from his hike, and then the following morning, other hikers that were in the in the area ended up discovering his remains and this extreme heat is considered to be at its worst in July and August and that is when the most people end up getting injured injured or passing away due to heat heat related 
cause it. And I'm by no means trying to fear monger in this video or telling you not to go to this park. Death Valley National Park definitely has a lot to offer. You can see every star in the sky at night. There are a lot of beautiful trails, beautiful scenic uh, views. So that's not the point of this video. It's just merely just more of a cautionary tale and to make sure that people know when they are going to visit this park, know what they're getting into. Not just for their hike or adventure, but make sure your car is properly equipped with the right supplies in it. Make sure you have a spare tire. And really, I would learn how to, there's ways that you can make water at night from condensation by digging a hole in the ground. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing in this video because it would take forever, but I can explain it in another video. But all I'm saying is, plan appropriately and know what you're getting into when you are visiting parks like this. Have a plan and tell people, multiple people, that you're going to be there. And have an emergency plan too. Have a backup plan just in case things go south or not according to your original plan. This can really help you in the event that something does go foul. All right, everybody, that's the end of today's video. My thoughts and prayers go out to anyone and everyone who may have lost someone in this park or who have suffered an injury or a hard time in this park. My thoughts and prayers go out to you. I wanna thank everybody for watching as always, and please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music, and I will see everybody in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. So if you ordered uh, a calendar, they are going to be in tomorrow, so I'll get those out to you. And if those of you who haven't ordered one and would like one of my merch calendars, they are $18, and you can just send me that to Venmo or my PayPal account, and I'll get one out to you straight away. And if you have any case suggestions for me, I'll have my email in the description, or if you have any questions, I'll have you can email me anytime for anything you'd like. And since I still haven't heard from any of the Fanny Pack winners, I'm going to be drawing new winners tomorrow. So I'll be calling, announcing those names at the end of tomorrow's video and putting it in the description as well. All right, guys. See you next time.